percent of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. It's kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days. Just this market happens to be a $10 trillion market. We are at a historic turning point. Said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. It's moving the whole revolution forward. Got it. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world. RP. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of 24 Hours Crypto. Let's get right into today's video. Sit back, relax. It is a Sunday, and I'm going to make a very bullish video for you guys today. A Ripple partner just revealed it all. Chris John Carlo, this is remarkable. You are not going to believe what you're about to witness here. And everything makes perfect sense. They know that these monstrous US banks are about to make some announcements. And they're even telling you that they're doing this implementation and working behind the scenes as we speak. This is history in the making and only a few of us will benefit off of this. And before we get into the video, this is the last time that I'm going to be bringing this to your attention and that is the XRP credit card skins. Link is in the description down below. These will not come back ever again. Every order has two skins. If you buy one order, you'll get two. If you order it twice, you'll get four. If you order it three times, you'll get six skins. And we have about one or two silver pendants left and that is link in the description down below and let's get right into it it's a digital dollar project chris john carlo is the leader in here and they are looking and reviewing the future role of the us dollar and ripple has been a partner with them since 2022 where they came together created a sandbox and now they're looking for infrastructure solutions and now you're going to listen to thomas pecha you're going to listen to chris john carlo and you are going to completely be shocked this is remarkable think about all the information that we have covered recently especially having how important liquidity is and this video right here is going to make perfect sense for you guys take a listen to this we did was the first in the world. So anyway, long story, when I left the commission, I'm convinced this is the technology of the future. This is the internet doing to banking and finance and money itself what it's already done to social networking and information gathering and, 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 and entertainment and leisure and, and retail shopping. It's changing everything and it's making all of those activities 24-7, 365 disintermediated activities. This is gonna change everything we know about finance. And what's gonna happen is the large banks, which already are kind of quietly devoting huge resources to this, the large banks, which already are kind of quietly devoting huge resources to this. We now have um, uh, two major prospects. I cannot name it, but hopefully you will read it in the press in the near future. Um, <laughs> they both, both of them, and I was really surprised, actually it's free. With a few breakthroughs, all of a sudden, the middle tier, the next tier of banks are all gonna have to do this, but they're not gonna build it themselves. Mm -hmm. They're gonna look around and say, what's the industrial grade and with that comes sort of big name uh, institutional adoption that I think will be encouraging for, for others that might have been on the fence. Solution for this that works, that delivers all the needs we have for privacy built into it, but it's interoperable with all of our peers. Given Ripple's place in the payments infrastructure, as well as a trusted brand partnership, as well as a trusted brand partner. Uh, the payments architecture has the right privacy protections so that people can trust using the system because trust is really the essential linchpin of any payment system. And listen to this part, okay? Dan Leiden and then Ripple. Listen to how they're talking about the same project. I'm telling you, this is going to be absolutely killer. They're testing it with you know small economies and then once they scale into 200 economies, can you believe where we're going to be at? It's interesting. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. We released this week a project called Project Mariana. And in this project, we looked specifically at, you know, we envision a world where CBDCs exist. And we took three economies, um, Singapore, 
uh, France and Switzerland and pooled their CBDCs in a common kind of offshore pool that was an automated market maker. And in that automated market maker, all the currencies could trade against each other. I, I, so, so, and I, I, so I bring that example as like a serious departure from the way we think about foreign exchange today conversation on. So first of all, on Project Mariana, um, you know, that's that's a fascinating body of work. And it's something Ripple in parallel is exploring, um, you know, how we can facilitate cross border cross currency um, uh, uh, transactions using uh, an automated market maker. And when we took three economies, um, Singapore, uh, France, and Switzerland, the ability to connect the diverse economies, the you know, 200 or so countries in the world, and, and make sure the payment system works for you know, all different profiles of companies. And pooled their CBDCs in a common kind of offshore pool that was an automated market maker. And one of the things I think Claudine commented on earlier was, was the idea of pools of liquidity. And I think that's one of the often overlooked elements of this is having that liquidity in place uh, is really critical to make sure, making sure those models function. Um, if you think about the number of different currencies and, and, and how much liquidity needs to be available to make those transactions, it becomes less and less efficient uh, because there simply often isn't enough liquidity there today. But there may be more liquidity if we pool all of our liquidity into one type of currency. Now, there's a historical context of how that generally co comes to be, how the currency, how that currency comes to be. But once you pool all that liquidity, you can create more efficient pricing structures. And I think that's one of the often overlooked elements of this is having that liquidity in place uh, is really critical to make sure, making sure those models function. Um, and I remember that Thomas Petra video because I had another video that was at very low quality and people were saying it's AI or I was messing with what he was saying. But I mean, there is the clear video. They're telling you two, but no, three monstrous banks. And it makes perfect sense why they're even saying as you know, one comes on, everybody will start rolling in. And with that comes sort of big name uh, institutional adoption that I think will be encouraging for, for others that might have been on the fence. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I do appreciate every single one of you guys. And now let's get into the juicy part of 100%, in my opinion, these targets are going to be met. Ripple and its digital asset XRP hitting a $10 trillion market cap for XRP itself will be achieved 100% all within our lifetime. Okay. And what does that mean for the value of XRP? This is a very basic calculation. You go with the circulating supply and you divide it by the market cap. Okay. For the projection. And if we do that and we do a $10 trillion market cap for XRP, 90 billion XRP in circulation, it'll be $111 per XRP. 75 billion XRP in circulation, it'll be $133 per XRP. But currently, let's just say 65 billion XRP is in circulation, give or take, $153 per XRP. Do I believe that these targets are achievable? 100%. Because if you just logically just use a couple brain cells, okay, not trying to be rude here, just bear with me. Zoom out, we're at 2 trillion, this market is going to go to minimum on us. I'm being conservative. Do not go in the comments saying, oh, you said this one time, you said this the other time. This is just a conservative number for you to work with. $80 trillion, okay, this whole ecosystem. Where do you think that value is gonna go to, right? Even if Bitcoin wants to go to, you know, a million dollars each, that's 20 trillion, give or take, in market cap. Okay, now we have, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 more trillions of dollars. That's where utility kicks in. That's where assets that are running nonstop, 24 seven, and without any friction. And you heard Chris John Carlo even say that. It's pretty much exactly what I've been telling you guys. This is gonna change everything. 
So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I do appreciate every single one of you guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Link is in the description down below for the XRP credit card skins. And we will be back with another video. Eventually, be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch. <laughs> I think what we're building has, you know, it's solving a real problem. And I think all of the tokens, my advice to anybody would be understand the utility. If there's real utility and there's real value being delivered to a real customer, there will be value in the token.